My dear Bagginses and Buffins. By the blood of our people, by your lands, Chip Sick, I see in your eyes the main fear that will take the heart of me. So do you know what to see such time? Just the way everything happens, I, I act okay. I was gonna do a separate video on this, and maybe we still will at some point. I came across an interview, and maybe you've actually seen this, where they're talking to how the 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 actor that plays Sauron. He didn't know he was Sauron until episode three. Okay. So, like, he he was filming episodes, being told he was just Halbrand, and then the the writers were like oh we forgot to mention your your sauron they they what they forgot to mention it to him like this character needs that <clears throat> motivation to be effective like this is why halbrand seems weird at first because he didn't know he was sauron <laughs> he the, the, like the character doesn't even know he's sauron like that's how crazy it is so uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And and the, the the beauty of it is they they want so badly for us to like fear Sauron's deep menacing plans and like oh, he's got this all figured out. But like so much of it is coincidence and luck. Yeah. And and so much of it is random decisions that nobody should have been ma making. <laughs> I love that. It's all you're doing. Yeah, I plan on getting stabbed. Then you would have to take me to the nearest healer. Yeah. Which happened to be Kellebrimbor. I can influence him on how to... <laughs> which is... And then I want... Then that would help me do my ring plan, which I knew would for sure work in time before any elves caught on to and what I, was going and on. And I knew you would... I knew you would find out I was Sauron, but not tell Kellebrimbor. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's it. So even if... Even if we grant all the other stuff that he actually could predict, he then believes that he has Galadriel under his control and he goes for it in the first season and it fails that was definitely not planned and so in that moment that screws up all the other plans and yet it didn't because luckily Galadriel is an idiot and doesn't tell anyone and then literally it's forced out of her and nobody seems to care like, nobody has ever... There was one moment where Elrond was like, not cool of you to lie to us about Sauron. But now everyone's cool again. Like, she brought Sauron here and lied about it. How do you know she's not even working for him? Yeah. I, I still think she might be. <laughs> and, and obviously she's not. But, like, if I were an elf, I would think she is. She has been nothing but trouble since she was mutinied. How do we know she's not fallen into the hands of Sauron? Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's good. I, I'll, I'll put that in. Oh, and I, oh, <laughs> the other thing, <laughs> when, when Adar, when Adar, because <laughs> glad you'll ask him what his real name was. I half expected Adar to be like, I'm Kelebor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I've heard that one. Uh, that was the theory that a lot of people had. Um, <laughs> I, and I was kind of getting into it as myself. I'm Kellaborn. <laughs> Cause I was, I was thinking like it could kind of work where. Cause he was captured. Yeah. And then, and then he could have been the first orc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she brings him back and, uh. And then like, that's like, and then that's why like they kind of set up their own thing. Cause no one else would accept him. Um. So uh, yeah, I I kind of thought it would be a, would work, but when she's like, "Who are you? Like, what's your name?" And I was like, "Okay, it's not him. Like, there's no way. <laughs> he looks like an elf. Like, he looks like how you would remember him. You wouldn't be like, "Who's this guy? I'm Kelleborn. Like, no, it. it um, yeah. So I, I was I was actually on that kind of conspiracy theory myself, but it is not to be. Yeah. So there is a lot of coincidence and luck and happenstance and plans that initially Sauron sets up then they fail but luckily for him they fail in a way that still works for example Galadriel not joining him 
and thus now knowing he's Sauron and not telling anyone. That's a failed attempt by him that works in his favor because no one still knows that he's Sauron. Um, so, yeah, like Sauron, he I'm sure he had some plan, but I still think if he had it his way, he'd be a Numenor being a blacksmith. That is where the only time I saw this character look longingly at an object other than Galadriel was a, the, the forge in Numenor. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he ultimately wanted to become a blacksmith. I just want that wife. guild badge. Yeah. So I can... <laughs> yeah. And he wants to marry Galadriel because she is the prettiest creature in all of Middle Earth. Um, yeah. So obviously Sauron would want that. Uh, so yeah, this is like, they, they talk a little bit here about he wants to heal Middle Earth. And so they're really setting up Sauron as being, you know, he doesn't think he's doing evil. He can't understand why all these, all these people are against him. Um, so Galadriel, Galadriel's gonna start, start fighting him, and he 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 easily handles it. It's not even a close fight. Um, and, and meanwhile, Elrond and Gilgalad are captured. Yep, and the orcs are tearing down the statue of Feanor and they're burning a bunch of scrolls from oh Elrond yeah I library. actually I actually really like this scene too and um th this is one where I okay how do I how do I phrase this without like being a weirdo but essentially like I want the orcs to do what they're doing because they're orcs so it makes mm -hmm. sense and then when Elrond is upset they're about to burn the scrolls those are like all the the working the the teachings of uh Celebrimbor and um you know we don't want to lose that i was like these orcs better not like barter for this stuff because these orcs don't care about this stuff like i yeah. don't i feel for like i am i love oh, it's horrible yeah so i am a i am fully on board with how elrond is like kill us and spare this stuff um i i this is a great scene because the orc teases them and then just does it anyway. I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, hate it, but love it. Like, I love that they have these orcs actually being like this um, to really make us hate these orcs again. Because he even laughs so when he it, does it. it I, and I have to bring this up because it just reminded me of this. And you can cut this if you think it's too political. <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> the... The... Umayyads, they were one of the first Islamic empires okay. and they did the same thing. They they would they would go, they would destroy all the books, and their logic was either it contradicts the Quran and needs to be destroyed, or it's consistent with the Quran and it's superfluous, so it doesn't need to exist. So we might as well just burn everything. They have a lot it seems like they're not the only ones. A lot of the uh, people that are following the Quran seem to have an, a, a, this idea that like other things don't matter because it's not in the Quran and that's all we need. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that all, like that's always confused me as to how that. I mean, I know there weren't a ton of like novels or whatever written back then, but I just. I would have thought that like other books would have been around that some people read. I know literacy. I mean, is low, like but... it's an at like what if it's an atlas? <laughs> the Quran doesn't have maps. That's that's my <laughs> point. That's my <laughs> point. It's like I I would have expected some people to realize like as they hear those words like hey we gotta burn all other books because if they're not in the, if it's not in the Quran it's worthless and I'm like I'm sure I've read maps before and they helped me get where I needed to go. Yeah. Um, and also, like, what if I just write down, like, a recipe for something? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I, I just want to remember it myself. It's not important for the Quran, but it's something I would like to be able to bring back and give to someone. Like, I just, the logic to me, like, in my modern mind, it's really hard for me to, like, see that logic. Because, like, yeah. it's so strange to me. Like, I, I, no matter what culture I find books of, even if I couldn't read them, I wouldn't destroy them. I want to know what they say. Like I, that's just yeah. that's just me. Like I, I collect old books. Like I like it. Um, 
So I just want to be clear, I'm not criticizing Islam, just this one particular <laughs> empire. Well, okay. it's just one, and this, it, they're not the only ones. This has happened yes. before, other cultures yep. have done this. Uh, look, my heritage, there's a lot um, of, you know, uh, Picts and, um, and, and other British Isle natives uh, to that region. That's all lost. They didn't have a lot of writing, but whatever they did have was destroyed by by Romans and, and Vikings and stuff. And so there's yes. like none of it's left, and that's why it's so sad. And so that's why I fully I fully understand what Elrond is saying here. And that and that's why I like this this scene as it as it starts so much. Um, but then it gets weird. So they the bird in the books. Gilglad calls them cowardly, cowardly oh, traitors or something. Something, yeah. And then, oh, yeah, you traitors to the orcs. Yeah. What? I was like, <laughs> we're who? always fighting. I don't understand what that means, cowardly traitors. Um, and then, El. So then they they tackle Gilglad, and then Elrond goes crazy, grabs a torch and starts beaming orcs in the head with and the that torch. And they shouldn't be able to, like, I think canonically they shouldn't be able to tackle Gilglad. Gilglad can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sauron in combat. <laughs> he's, like, he's strong as a Maiar. Right, more, and more so you're, you're starting to see my problem with how they've yeah. structured the scene, is that we have Gilglad being held down by, like, one orc, which mm. one orc couldn't hold down any of the original uh, Fellowship, the Nine of the Fellowship, like, that... Even the hobbits would take on an orc, uh, and then Elrond. No, the, I mean, from the, from the beginning, they should have said, you know, none of us. Uh, Gladrill and Adder could have been like, you know, neither of us can actually probably fight this guy. You know, why don't we just give the crown to Gilgalad, and he's got a ring already. I think you and I <laughs> even said, you and I even mentioned that, like, why doesn't Gladrill and Gilgalad and um. And just uh, have Gilgalad enter the city. He's the king. You're yeah. gonna let him in. Yeah, and, and everyone. Then he, would... And then he goes fight Sauron one on one and wins because he can do that. And uh, then, then the story's over. No, exactly. I'm, Gilgalad has been not. He's not given enough for what he is. Um. And I just I don't like how they have handicapped this character by having him be. A do well, nothing king. <laughs> Nerd Roddick calls him middle manager. Gilgalad. That's that's like, <laughs> like, like this is. I'm going down this like dark pit of like agreeing middle with. Gilgalad. Like I fully understand what Nerd Roddick is saying now. That's Regi how regional manager. Gilgalad. Yeah, it it's crazy to me. Like I want to see like we. If you look back at the original trilogy, every character gets to shine, and. They, they all have their own unique personalities and they all get their moment. And here you have a plethora of characters. I think too many. I think they bit off way too many and they should have focused it. But some of these guys, like Gilgalad, because you're using an established character that people are going to know, you cannot cut his, his legs out from under him like this. You could do that with, with a Rondir because nobody knows who that is. But... With Gilglad, you can't have him be. Oh, this. never mind, Rondir. <laughs> he, he got stabbed. The last oh, time. I know. We're getting there. So <laughs> it's completely unaddressed. So okay, totally okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay, let's <laughs> let's get there. Gilglad is tackled by one orc who has a knife to his throat. Elrond goes nuts, grabs a torch, and starts beaming orcs in the head with a torch. Lights one on fire, and just when they're about to kill them. The orc that was like burning books is like, no, no, Sauron wants them alive. Yeah, Sauron wants them alive, but they're killing orcs right now. Like, they're not well, cooperating. I mean, yeah, and Sauron said, bring me the leaders. Is Arondir a leader now? Ah, like, exactly. I mean, oh, yeah. And is Elrond? Like, I don't even know why Elrond was leading the charge. It should have been Gilglad from the get go. But sure, Elrond can come. But Arondir is not only alive, but is a leader? No, I'm sorry. This man is dead. This is... I cannot go along with this. Any scene with Arondir that he has an impact on is a dream sequence from now on. He's <laughs> dead. He cannot be alive. And even if he was alive and was... He should be like... 
groaning on the battlefield and we're, we're, we find him at the end like he's just like barely alive or yeah something. if I you're gonna know. have him be alive it has to be like that and for some reason maybe adar it, it, like i know adar's now dead but before that maybe adar does because Adder's touched the ring now. Maybe he saves a Rondir. I don't know. Like, you cannot just bring him back in a scene randomly and be like, he oh, he's also a leader. He's he's the co he's co-leader of the of the elves now. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? So, okay, so that so the elves can do whatever they want because Sauron wants them alive. And a Rondir's now a leader. Um and then like they're just being, with that knowledge, and Elrond's passion, I can't believe he's not fighting to the death for those scrolls. So those scrolls are still being burned. They're still putting more scrolls on the fire. Elrond has said himself, kill us instead of the scrolls. He beams a couple orcs in the head with a torch, is then told, do not kill Elrond. He's too valuable. He then gives up his fight and just watches it happen. I, I don't understand, like, they, the writers had so much in their minds when they are writing the scene, and they have snippets of good ideas about the book burning, um, about, like, losing history, all that. But then they, they ruin it by setting up, once again, a weird situation where characters have to act, you know, in a manner that doesn't make sense for the scene that they're in. Like, just have Elrond getting beaten to a pulp so that he he can't fight anymore or something like he he is passionate about these scrolls and he's just gonna now give up and watch meanwhile Gilglad is tackled by one orc who's just sitting on top of him with a knife it makes no sense and, th and then we cut back to to Sauron playing with his food where he's just like kicking Galadriel and she can't do a thing uh I, again I don't know how like is Galadriel does she feel like she can't run away at this point because she'll just like Sauron will just chase after her? like so it's almost like she has to fight or is she actually trying to fight like it's like running away from a bear you, you can't or something I yeah don't know. that's what I'm, I'm wondering because like <laughs> at this point yeah she's kind of in it and there's nothing she can do she has the rings though so she has to like try and get them away so I, I don't know I don't know how I would react here but I just this know is she... when you, this is when you summon an eagle. Uh, yes. Because, oh, yes. That your... that would help. And I will say, she's kind of screwed herself by putting her in this situation. She had tons of time to leave when she was dealing with Adar, um, and so now she finds herself here. There's some cool. There's some cool choreography here. I'm not gonna lie. She does get a kick in on Sauron. Um, right. I, I. Okay. This is another thing where. I'm fine with her getting a moment in. I think the way you do it is you have her play up the fact that, oh, maybe I will join you or something to that effect. He lets his guard down, then she can kick him. I, 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 it just seems like Sauron's too good. Like, he's not going to ever get kicked like that. Um, and so I just wish they had played into this. Like, Sauron is in his own mind. Like, he has got an ego. And that's how you kind of get to him and in fact a lot of people argue like that's what happens in the original trilogy his ego gets the best of him and he believes that other people are going to use the ring and go to like you know go to um gondor and just have a big fight he doesn't think that someone would not use the ring and kind of sneak around because he can't fathom that mentality uh, so I just, I wish we had a bit more of like playing into his ego, the way Keller Brimborg kind of did in moments. Um, and then we get this kind of neat shape-shifting scene where we get to see him run through all these different characters. Uh, and uh, honestly, it's well shot. I don't know, like the dialogue isn't amazing, but it's not terrible. Um, I, I actually think this scene's kind of okay. It's just, it becomes weird because instead of like trying to kill galadriel again he's now like walking around shape-shifting and galadriel's chasing him and she's he's playing though he's playing. oh he's playing no no for sure but i just yeah. mean in terms of like he was on the attack he then gets kicked down um a little bit of a hill and then now he's playing again 
and he's kind of not he's walking away and she's chasing after him now because she's like he's he's shape-shifting into these different characters uh so i just I thought, again it's one of these things where like it's not the way i would have done it but i, I guess like i won't hate on it too much it's just i i would have done it a bit different um he then crashes the rock that they're standing on i think deliberately they uh they both fall down but he gets up quicker and and she she's hurt she's crawling to oh yeah because she's been she's been cut a couple times and he just kicks the sword away but then, then he the, walks away but then then walks he walks a- then he walks away and he she he lets her to crawl to it yeah i down. know again it's just like okay that could be a cool idea and i'm sure whoever came up with it was like hey he is he's gonna kick the sword away and then he's gonna be like you know what it doesn't even matter if you get the sword you can have it because you never get like but they don't do it right it looks goofy he kicks the sword she's still crawling he kicks it and then she just crawls up to it again and grabs it like that's that is not how you film that i don't understand uh yeah so (laughs) this is where we get a um you know the door is still open uh the door is shut kick (laughs) spinning kick into more sword sword play um now how then she, she gets a cut in eventually she does and, get a cut in here and it seems and it seems like this is what enrages him yes so he gets a cut in then he loses his cool and then he stabs her with the crown right now i will say um i did not know how they were going to end the scene because as i was watching it i was thinking to myself neither one of these characters can die in this scene the only way I can see the scene ending is by somehow Sauron getting the upper hand and uh, disarming Galadriel or something. Maybe taking her prisoner, maybe knocking her out or something. I, I actually was shocked about the stab. So, to the to the writer's credit, be, because... And I've, I've harped on this before, but when you have characters that we know live it's hard to make the stakes of the scene work and in this in this scene they actually played on that they knew that we us watching were not concerned for galadriel's well-being because she will live and so when she gets stabbed by uh morgoth's crown that's a shock like i did not see that coming um and also does that mean that she's um got a I mean they kind of talk about this a little bit later on but um I'm not sure if they've completely healed her by the time the original trilogy comes around does she have a little bit of that darkness in her maybe that like I wondered maybe that's also one of the reasons she doesn't join the foul that's yeah now you know we're, we're starting to piece together like why did this badass not join the fellowship um, or like Calib- also i didn't have i don't think we suggested this before maybe, maybe Caliborn was like no i don't want you seeing that guy again <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean i think we may have made that joke before where it's like um wh- wh- why are these where's gandalf why are these people on our doorstep uh oh we're, we're gonna go see sauron and, and destroy this ring it's like, Galadriel, <laughs> you are you are not going out tonight. You're staying home. I don't I don't like this. I don't trust you with that guy. I I've seen what happens in the in that fountain. <laughs> so yeah, so she stabbed. Uh, I was shocked. Um, and uh, this is where um, he says he would have made her queen. Uh, and then she says, the free peoples of Middle Earth will always resist you. Then Sauron takes the nine rings from her. Yep. So this is when Sauron finally gets the nine rings. But he leaves her ring. Right. She still, she is wearing it. Yep. Yeah. Now he doesn't take her ring. He had no. already said he wanted it. I. I guess he was just so focused on the nine. He forgot. He, kinda... he yeah, kind of forgot. forgot. You know what that reminds me of? In Game of Thrones, there's a there's the behind the scenes where they're Daenerys, talking. Daenerys, she kind of forgot. She kind of forgot about, about the Ireland. yeah, like that. <laughs> that can't be. Uh, uh, meanwhile, we cut back to, um, we, we cut back to Aragion 
the dwarves Give me your horn. the dwarves have finally shown up and they're dominating now uh and so now Gilgalad, Elron and Arondir are able to fight back um and then Elron asks uh Narvi well he, he sees a dwarf and he's like is that is that uh Durin and it's Narvi and he goes no Durin's in mourning I can't believe okay Hey, I thought the Belrog was maybe a more of a threat, so the dwarves were just never gonna come. The fact that the yep. dwarves came and Durin didn't come, um, that's weird. Like, yes, your dad died, but like the fate of Middle Earth is like fighting, and it's right outside your doorstep. And so you're gonna send your army, but you're not gonna go. I maybe I'm not thinking straight, but like to me, I I do think I would have gone to fight. Um you're the one that like rallied your people to go fight and you made it like it's so important that we go and do this and then you're not gonna join uh to me it's it, it takes away from that character a little bit um so that's I, I have an issue with that and then I have an issue with the fact that the dwarves like the elves couldn't win against these orcs but the dwarves are now just dominating like it's not even close like it's almost like they're an uh, otherworldly power that that it, that can't be stopped by the mere orcs, and yet the elves were just getting massacred. Um, and and it's not like we have a scene where Gilglad's like splitting up his army. The full force of the elves came and did nothing. Like the elves yeah. seem super weak here. Um. So yeah. So then we cut back to Galadriel who gets up and so again, this is when he this is when he does ask for, for right ring, but right? this is like can he not take it do you have to ask for it is that the thing like like you have to be given it i'm confused mm, because there's no way that's a thing there's, there's no, no way, way that's a thing <laughs> she was lying on the ground dead basically and then again like keller brimbor she gets up why are these characters getting up it, it makes it seem like a joke it makes it seem like a comedy sketch when you have characters that have died stand up and then do a massive speech it's like a spoof on lord of the rings i i cannot understand how they were filming this and they filmed her die and fall down and then they're like okay now you're gonna get up and offer him the ring but psych and jump off the cliff it doesn't make sense to me why is that the scene yeah why doesn't she just jump off the cliff like before maybe she, she but maybe she's actually being tempted but then she resists but why did she get up she's been stabbed i it uh, uh. <laughs> she's tough she's tough oh, she's, <laughs> she's real tough she she has been stabbed by the the crown of morgoth and then jumps off a cliff to certain death yes and i <sighs> That is not how these scenes are supposed to happen. And she's not even wearing the ring as she jumps. So I was going to say maybe the ring can keep her alive from the bottom. No, she's no, holding it in her hand. It falls out because Aron picks it up. Off That's the right. That's right. She's holding it and she falls and then she must like splat. And then the ring goes over there. And then luckily, anyway, I mean, we'll get he... there. But okay. Like, this just Oh, doesn't... yeah. Aron, dear. And uh, they can like see her falling in like the far distance. I like, know. See this I little... can't believe they filmed that. <laughs> Now look, there's a scene in the original trilogy where you see someone falling off of a very uh, tall height, um, and it's a really cool scene because the guy's covered in fire. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Here it looks kind of dumb. I'm not gonna lie. Like, why cut to that? I look. They can just find her after the battle. Okay, you don't need to cut every time someone's like, "Oh, we gotta go find Galadriel." Um, but yeah, I, I just don't like, like, look back at the original trilogy. Boromir, um, in in the first movie, uh, I forget the elf's name, but in this, in the, at Helm's Deep, an elf dies. Oh, I think it's Haldir. Haldir. He dies, and that scene is heart-wrenching, and it's well shot. He doesn't then get back up and have a conversation with the orcs or with, with anyone. And then die again. Same as Boromir. He 
gets shot. He's about to get shot a fourth time when Aragorn shows up. And then by the time Aragorn's done fighting, he's on the ground, dying. He didn't get up and talk. That's just, why is this happening in, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand. It looks so dumb to me. I cannot believe, I, I thought I was watching like a weird version when I saw Celebrimbor do it. And now I see Galadriel do it. It's so bad to me. I, I'm watching Monty Python sketches is what this is. <laughs> so she then jumps off the cliff. We see her fall like a little like fluff ball on the distance. Um, and that's when the orcs show up and uh, they go, the dwarves are, are overwhelming us and are securing the elf. The, these guys don't have Christopher Lee to tell them how people are supposed to get stabbed. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Oh man, that we miss that guy. That guy can set them straight. So Glug shows up and is being the Weasley self that he always is. The dwarves are, you know, they're too overwhelming and they're securing the elf retreat. No, it's all is lost. I, we don't, I don't want to pursue them. If we pursue them, many orcs will die. Yeah. So I am so glad that he's dead. Sauron's like, uh, uh, so Sauron just stabs him. He's like, I'm done with this orc. This orc is the worst one. And the other orc, the, the, there's an orc behind him too that kind of like. Reasons yeah, and just <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> okay, understood, understood, sir. You don't want to be disturbed. Well, we're, we're, we're moving on. Um, I don't even know what the order is, though, because they don't pursue. Right? Like, uh, that's a good point. They, nothing happens. What happens? Galadriel fell off the cliff into fighting, and they don't go and get her. The elves are now regrouping <clears throat> somewhere in the forest. They're not going to go there. The dwarves have overwhelmed them somehow when they've just been rejuvenated with Sauron. I just, it's so strange. Um, so, so, so passes Glug, son of, uh, we don't know his father's name, son of Adar. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, hmm. Well, good riddance, maybe. Yeah. Oh, man. I, that that was my least... I mean, it's a toss-up between him, Isildur, and Kemen. But they're all hated for different reasons. But I hated Glug for being a character that went... It made me not like the idea of having in, including orcs in the show. Glug was that character and ruining it. So he's gone. Orcs are now better for it. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, we are saving, uh, we got to save Galadriel because Gilglad can't do it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. If Arondir, Gilglad, and Arond arrived to her, her. I, I still can't believe Arondir's here. Like, I, it, when I was He's watching this, too, yeah. all right, this is like a little tangent, but have you ever seen the room? Well, there's a yeah. character that shows up in the final act and what had happened was, um, they, they had replaced a, a different character that was in the movie for most of it, but that actor quit. So in the final act, all of his lines were said by a random ass character that just shows up that you've never met before. He just starts interjecting into people's conversations. Like, I agree with that. And, oh yeah, me they too. Should, they should have reshot everything with that. Like, all. The, oh, they should have re reshot all of Peter's scenes. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Because with the new guy yeah yeah uh, so because it makes no sense it makes right? no sense and it's hilarious <laughs> that's a rondier now a rondier shows up and he's now like a co-leader of the elves and he even he even asks i mean we're gonna get there because we gotta first cut back to the hobbits but he even like has a line that is that feels like it's in from the room where like someone says something and then he turns to Galadriel is like I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. But but what do you think? What do you think Commander Galadriel? It's like what the who wrote that for this guy? Let have him sit in silence. Don't like that's such a that's such a terrible line. Anyway, we got to first do the hobbits or the harfoots. Um and okay, th this scene, I mean, we're basically the the episode's the episode should have ended when Galadriel fell off that cliff on a good cliff. Hand. Right. But you, 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 we should go into the whole, uh, because the, they kind of dramatize it a bit because Gilgalad is trying to save her, but he can't. Yeah. 
And then Alron's like, he picks up the ring, he's like, I can, we can together. So, with so the idea is like with the power of two, I get well, <laughs> Kirdan's not there, so two of the three rings, <laughs> we can, maybe we can save her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Alron puts the rings and says, we can save her together. Okay, now we're back to the the Harfoots. Yeah. So the Harfoots are. Are they're cleaning up the so, so it's yeah. basically just a bunch of endings okay it's it's this is well way... and this is the funny thing too because now the now the now the now the stores are going to become migratory like the harfoots are yeah but i w i was watching this and i was saying i think they're giving up a little early you know they might be able to fix some of this stuff i know it's not <laughs> like they had like crazy technology here like you could just you know put up your little clothes hangers or whatever and restart yeah, you just need to pick up some of these rocks and, yeah uh, and like gandalf's here he can just move the rocks like with magic or something um, yeah so okay we're gonna get a bunch of endings here now people joke about the return of the king endings i personally like them i know i'm in the minority on that um even people who love the movies think the endings are too much um but these endings all suck they're all done wrong. So in this ending here, you're right. The stewards are gonna be migratory now, and that Nori and Poppy think that they're going like they they need them, so they're gonna help them. Yeah, Nori's upset. Oh, and then we have Poppy gives a long speech, and then we have like shots of all the different characters. Uh, That's right. Um, so she, I I wrote it down, but then I eventually stopped writing <laughs> uh well, because okay, it, so it, it, just... yeah you don't really need like like the speech kind of it, it kind of goes with things but not really um and so yeah what what you've got basically is the elves have have regrouped um yeah like... so yeah we see i did write this down so we see we see shots of the dwarves mourning during the third. Yeah. Then we see shots of the elves leaving a region. This is Poppy's. This is all while Poppy's yeah. voicing over her speech of about it's about loss and like. Oh yeah, um, it's not sometimes. nearly. By the way, it's not nearly as good as something like that Sam gives. Um, yeah. At the end of yeah. uh, Two Towers, that speech has me in tears every time. Well, this speech is like sometimes shit happens. You have to accept. It, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's all it is. And sometimes you just gotta put it back together after that it's broken. It's like what uh, the heck? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, we get. Um, so then we have the elves sleeping a Rakeon walking away. Orcs not pursuing them. <laughs> yep. Um, we got Isildur and his. Um, oh no! We also have Theo seeing the new Minorians move into Plark here. I guess Theo's. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you get... maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not mayor anymore. I don't know what's going to. Yeah, am I but... still mayor or is Kevin mayor? <laughs> Who's the mayor? Um, Hagen is with his his fiance, who he yeah. knows is cheating on him. Isildur <laughs> is gonna leave. So away. here's the thing: Isildur. I thought this was a moment for Isildur to be like, "I don't want to go back to Numenor. I'd rather be with you." No, screw you. I'm going Fuck back it. to Numenor. <laughs> I know you cheated on your husband with me, but you're not and that. Added, and I out, and I outed this whole. I and I outed you, and I outed all of us. But you're not that good. Like, you're not good enough for me. I'm going back to Numenor where we yeah. have running water. Like, screw this place. <laughs> screw all you. you know what? I'm going uh... home. <laughs> so he leaves. Uh, this is what I was getting at. I, didn't, I hinted at it before. But the fact that he leaves after what just happened is ridiculous. It's 